Hey guys, welcome back to another Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath video commentary. That's right, I'm Green Zero and we are back. We are back for Season 9. The ride never ends. It never ends. It's still going. And here we are with another brand new season of videos. I hope you all enjoyed my 500th Kane's Wrath video commentary. I did uh, read all the comments there and it's great to see how many people uh, responded to that and said, hell yeah, this is awesome and things like that. And how many people have been following the channel for such a long time. I read all your comments. I can't reply to all of them because you know, there's a lot of people there. And uh, thank you for everyone for, for tuning into my videos and things like that. We're still going. I've got plenty more Frontline coming up, which is being shaken up as well. Frontline is going to be uh, turned uh, upside down a little bit with what I've got going. It's gonna, definitely going to focus a bit more on the strategies and tactics from now on. But uh, that is still coming. I've got plenty of footage to bring you from that. But I'm doing a commentary here today. So we are watching Phoenix, a.k.a. Stephen Donald Nashington versus Harv Spam for Nubs, which is Master Leaf. It's Master Leaf here. And we're going to jump in because we are on Tournament Arena. Everyone's favorite completely flat featureless map here. Starting over on the right-hand side playing as the GDI faction. It's going to be... Phoenix, aka Stephen Donald Nashington there. He has dealt a GDI faction. Uh, hot tip, they actually selected their faction, so um, it is going to be a GDI versus Black Hand because Master Leaf over here going, you know what? Black Hand OP, he's playing as the Black Spam. And of course, we are playing on R12, so he's not going to get the uh, extra cabals. He's going to have to send more cabals if he wants to kill Nash, because uh, you only need two Rifleman squads to kill a cabal squad now, assuming that it's a drafted cabal squad. But Nash only has one squad in the middle. He's being herded around. Leaf is going to close the gap here, actually pulling his units back, maybe trying to hide from them. But if Nash is quick, he'll just be able to outrun them anyway. Yeah, look at that. He's herding Nash around, and he's bringing these scouts back, which means he's probably going to rush or at least he's playing mind games with Nash because he doesn't want the Rathman squad to get in. Of course, very, very easy for Nash to go for a Pitbull. And look, he's going for a Pitbull. He knows. He knows. He's too uh, professional of a player, to, well, he's a professional player, um, to not scout Blackhand. On such a small map, Master Leaf, are you going for a rush, buddy? What do we got going down here? No, we got for a second ref coming down, so he's definitely not rushing. He's going for a harvester. He's going for another harvester, so he's just eco echoing. So it is mind games here. The Cabal is being kept back at home. Very easy to counter scout on this level, even though it's wide open. Uh, basically, you got the scouts up there, the scouts in the middle, and the scouts to the left, and you can just stop anyone from getting in, especially if you're black hand, because uh, your scouts are basically the best in the game from a draft perspective, even with the nerf they received. Which uh, is uh, it's actually made it's actually made this uh, matchup actually uh, I think it's definitely worked for the best and it was definitely a good idea it's a long time coming that was but of course that's been around for a while now so let's focus a bit more on the game just picking away at this harvest to masterly forced to undock actually just going to go straight back to refining there not too fast that this pit bull is starting to wear his harvester down half the health is gone from it he's probably not too fast and yeah a bike is going to come out now with proper micro the bike will beat the pit bull because. Uh, He's probably just going to pull it back. Yeah, he takes one shot, just pulls it back. He's not going to get the pitbull, but at least he's scared it away. More bites coming out. The harvester is very soft, though. If it's uh, it's not very close to the war factory, so not going to get repairs. Black Hand have the weakest harvesters in the game. Fun fact, their harvesters are actually weaker than that of Nod and Mox, so they will die very fast, and they don't have stealth either, so... You actually need less firepower. A uh, second Warfare. Well, we've got two Warfare just coming out by Master Leaf. Does Nash pick up on this? I think he went for... Yeah, he's going for a refinery. So he actually went for economy. He had to stop. He's being stalled. He probably should have the ref down by now. But of course, because he's had to build pit bulls, he's just holding off. Did he cancel the refinery? It may be paused. It may be paused. I don't believe he would have just cancelled that refinery. That would have set him back very, very far. It is double warfare. Actually, the grenades do miss, but it's not going to matter. He's going to be able to kill those rifle squads who aren't even attacking, actually, and they will be destroyed. Now, he does. He just did a head. He had it paused. Uh, fun fact, if you pause a construction, it actually disappears from the blue line, as you can see here when he's building. Uh, the bottom one is support. The top one is, uh, or the middle one, is uh, structure. So when you pause something, it's just the whole line goes goes blank. But uh, he will be power microing. He does get the refinery down. Master Leaf, although... Also has a refinery down here. She built a second harvest from that war factory as well. So he's got quite a lot of economy here. The bikes were somewhat destroyed. Actually, no, no, the bikes are back here. So that's okay. I was going to say, if he didn't have any bikes, these 
Pitbulls could really do some work here. Marcy being forced to pull that off the line. This Scorby take takes a bit of damage there. A lot of Pitbulls not want to not gonna ah not gonna want to get isolated there. A few more Rifleman squads coming in just to be a hassle. Not pulling that tank back. He is gonna pull it back now. That's unnecessary to lose that Scorpion. Second Scorp comes out now. Too many Scorps come out. Those uh those uh, Pitbulls aren't gonna be enjoying that. They can take them on in small numbers, but once you get a uh, half dozen or so. It starts getting pretty tricky, but Nash here, Nash, as a GDI player, definitely likes his uh, heavy ground play here. So uh, he's got a Predator tank coming out. He's probably got more Predators. He's building more Predators. It's a big open flat map. It does favor armor. Uh, you can also base push in the late game because of the close proximity of the bases. But of course, neither side has technology just yet for that. So um, I think tanks are more important. These bikes trying to go around. Nash knows here. Look at this wall of Predators there, just completely shutting them down. These bikes want to get in. Marcy's done a pretty good job of keeping these alive, uh, must say, though, because normally some players might have just thrown them at the enemy by now, but uh, not leave here. He's going to keep them alive, and of course that means they'll be able to go and harass somewhere else later on down the track. Nash still has to worry about them flanking him. His Pitbull army is down the bottom side here. The Predators are heading to the top of the map. Look at this. Still trying to zone out the bikes. Normally the bikes would have a, the upper edge here, but they're actually getting pushed back, keep keeping them in his own base, so... That's not what he wants to see. Rifleman squad gets taken out. Battle markers over here. The, the Scorpion takes here. One of them is very badly damaged, but they will push back these pit bulls. He's going to chase them. He might get those two pits on the edge there. He will get two pit bull kills, maybe a third. Third pit bull will go down. Battle markers over here. No, it's just the bikes and infantry. He's going into infantry transition. Uh, Predator tanks now trying to take down this spike. There's units going everywhere right now. There's bikes and Scorpion tanks over here. The pit bulls fall back to the base. A little bit of defense here. No AP ammo is done yet. It better be close for Nash's sake. No, it's quite a long way away. And the infantry push is coming. Does he have? Oh, he's got no power. He needs to finish that before he engages. He's going to engage before Disciple. That is a huge error there. Yeah, he's going to turn around. He realizes now that engaging without Disciple is bad. This Harvester here actually looks like he was trying to send that to Master Leaf's Bluefield. Sorry, not Master Leaf's Phoenix's Bluefield, but uh, he's turned it around. Actually managed to save it, so I think he could have got that if he really tried hard for it. There's uh, units over here as well. Nash just moving forward. Still with no, PM, no AP ammo. The Disciple upgrade is done. These Predator tanks now. Oh, this is the problem. They're going to get trapped in the corner of these infantry. Even if they go on for the crush, it's not going to be cost effective here. Uh, he's actually going to try to engage these guys over here. There's Cabal squads. These units are going to be destroyed. He is going to go in for the crush. Nash is actually, sorry, uh, Master Leaf is actually spreading as well. He's spreading them out. So yeah, that's what it's, it's just not going to work. Uh, even if the infantry do ultimately get crushed, these Predator tanks have been reduced and going to be destroyed. It's actually not bad of an effort for a crush. Three Predator tanks still alive here. He's actually cleaned up almost all of these guys here. So, uh, but yeah, those two tanks are in the red. They're going to die very shortly. Nothing else happening just yet. It looks like Master Leaf is pulling his main force back. Not going to engage Nash here. These tanks here, Nash not attempting to save them or micro them any further. He just has left them to their fate. They probably weren't going to escape anyway. The infantry with heavy damage mode, they're going to be destroyed. Tech center is down here for Master Leaf. Does he have uh, the beam upgrade? No, he does not have charge particle beams. Not researching anything actually. He might be going for an obelisk. He might might be going for a chem plant. He could be looking for some clicks. He doesn't even have Dozer Blade, which he's not even bothering to research. He's actually going for purifiers and infantry here. So, uh, just I guess he felt that he didn't build enough to uh, to warrant that. Uh, has he got eyes on Master Leaf's base? That's the question. Uh, sorry, uh, Nash's base. I've probably got the names mixed up a few times here because normally Nash would be playing as the uh, the Black Hand. So, uh, Master Leaf can see that that army is retreating. Maybe hoping to bait it for a Tib Vein. Um, I think uh, Nash not aware that that chem plant exists, but uh, dropping extra Tiberium. Master Leaf is pretty set over here now. Been harvesting his blue Tiberium. Nash has taken a swing at it, but he needs a bit more. Coming back for more now. And he's got he's got these juggernauts out. This uh, Scorpion tank could just be to move in to get eyes on the refineries. There we go. He shuts it down. Did, doesn't even kill a harvester. She only gets a refinery. He only kills a refinery. The bikes now looking for wounded harvesters. Nash pulls them back. Well done. He's actually going for a frontal attack here. I'm not sure if he's got enough. There's actually, yeah, he realizes. Hang on a second. There's quite a lot of infantry there. And with the purifiers, you've got to remember the purifiers, they have a buffing aurora. So they increase the combat effectiveness of everything around him. He uses the shockwave artillery, actually, uh, over here. And he only nails just one purifier. He doesn't really even get many infantry squads here. He's going to come in now with this orbital strike here. This is going to be a pretty intense engagement. Marcy trying to pull those back. But uh, look at that. Uh, Nash is already retreating uh, that orbital strike doing somewhat sporadic damage there and just forcing Master Leaf to stay into his base here. But uh, these Juggernauts, this is actually a problem. He's got enough units on the ground to defend these Juggernauts here. And there is a Spectre Artillery coming out as well. I'm not sure what happened to those bikes. I can only assume they got destroyed. Maybe they did some harassment. I'm not 100% sure. I wasn't paying attention. But this base is now being seized. You can see the Redeemer. I'm not sure if you can see the Redeemer, but the Redeemer is coming out. And that will end this push. The Juggernauts, the most important unit in this uh, uh, engagement here, are being safely pulled back. Not going to risk losing those bad boys. Those are very, very important units. A few Predator tanks moving along just to cause some problems here. 
if left unchecked, they will take out Harvesters. Leaf has cleaned up all of his blue field here, and uh, Nash still going back for more, so he hasn't quite cleaned that up. He did lose a ref, so he's actually a little bit down. He needs a second ref to cut. He's not even constructing a second refinery. He's trying to get a Marv out, and you can't blame him. He's like, hey, there's a Redeemer. I need to get a Marv out right now. Space Command, he used almost all of his abilities that are helpful to him. I mean, the only thing he's got left is Zone Trooper Drop Pod and Supersonic Airstrike. Supersonic Airstrike being 100% useless in this engagement for the uh, GDI player since Black Hand does not get any air, and uh, he could probably just sell that up. I mean, Shockwave Artillery doesn't... Oh, look at that. Spectre Artillery actually nailing these guys here. Forces a sell of the Tib Chem Plant, so no longer has to worry about that that threatening Tib Vein, at least unless Marsleaf wants to replace that. Now, it is going for the base push. He's got Spectre Artillery, one of the longest... It's basically the longest ranged artillery unit in the game if you exclude the Juggernaut Bombard with the Sniper teams, which is basically unlimited but we're talking about just uh, what are you, conventional warfare here. He's got quite a few Spectres out now. He's got one, two, three, four. I can see five of them. They're a bit split up. There's a six one back at home. Marsleaf not organizing himself just too well. These Predator tanks just distracting him by the looks of it. Uh, Nash does have the only spike on the map, of course, but this is getting nasty. Scan comes down. Doesn't have to worry about stealth, at least, because Black Hand don't get it. That can be really painful when the uh, the Nod player pushes you and they use stealth. The Marv is out. He doesn't have a second refinery. He's still not building a second refinery. Juggernauts are spread out. Now, this is just to mitigate any damage that may be done by a Rage Gen here. He force fires the Marv as well. He's not going to fall for it. But the problem is, is that Marsleaf can now edge further, further forward here. And uh, I'm not 100% sure what Marsleaf is doing. He seems to be somewhat idle, doesn't he? I'm not sure if he's sure what he's actually doing here. Sniper teams moving across with the Juggernauts. These Juggernauts look like sitting ducks, but of course they are not with three sniper teams here as well. He can uh, sneak a sniper team in to get the bombard down on maybe the tech center there because he's got quite a number of juggernauts here now. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how many. There's one, two, three, four. There's five of them. Wow, they're all in a big arc here. There is going to be engagement. It's going to be spread out so far. I'm not going to be able to see the whole thing. Uh, the Marv and two Juggernauts coming from the top of Rage Gen will go off the... Oh, no. The Raven Squad is shooting each other. The Sniper teams are spared. They are not attacked. The Marv runs in. Shockwave Artillery comes down. EMP buggies come down. And, oh, man, the Zone Trooper drop on is coming. This is a massive engagement. I can't even catch it. The Sniper teams are actually flanking very heavily. The Marv is almost... The Marv is finished. It's down. It got completely destroyed here. The Redeemer, on the other hand, still has half his health. It's taking a lot of fire, though. It's taking a lot of fire. The Zone Troopers moving in now. They might want to watch out for those purifiers if they get in range. The Sniper teams still doing work on the left side here. It doesn't look like any of them be destroyed. They're still firing at these units here. It will take a while to kill the Disciple squads here. Uh, one Juggernaut will fall. That other Juggernaut might want to move back. Oh, a Sonic Emitter is here as well. He's got to be careful. These purifiers might be finished off. He's pulling the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the, the Zone Troopers back as well. And these Juggernauts on the, the left flank or the rear flank here have just been completely unchecked. This whole engagement doing a lot of damage. Those Purifier Huts are down. He does keep these Zone Troopers alive. He still has quite a number of Juggernauts here. That Juggernaut's probably about to fall. He puts down a barracks to prevent any firing on those units and he's going to try to reclaim these husks. And Marsleaf, there's not a lot he can do about it. These Juggernauts are now moving in. They're going to target those Spectre Artillery, which are all, all in deploy mode. He's going to try to take them out right now. He's firing at them. Unfortunately, he got one of his sniper teams to fire at them as well. Firing sniper rounds at uh, Spectre Artillery and they're all dead, unfortunately. Uh, Zone Trooper Squad comes in. There's no flame in the Redeemer. There's no flame in the Redeemer. Oh, they should have targeted the damage one. Oh man, he could have destroyed the damage one. Leaf gets a lifeline there. We'll pull back. He's got three Spectre Artillery left. There's still four Juggernauts on the front line here. Two more to recover. One just getting recovered then. It's getting really messy, really scrappy. Nash, these two hero Juggernauts from the uh, the south flank here are getting a little bit too close. Oh, they both go down, unfortunately, but he does recover these other two, so he's making up the numbers here right now. That Sonic Emitter doing some devastating damage. He could take out the Engineers, and no, that Engineer, Hero Engineer just runs through, but that, spe oh, that Spectre Strike was unnecessary. He put a, quite a number of rounds on that, and Leaf is forced to sell the main area. He did recover one of the other Juggernaut Husks himself, but it was destroyed. And yeah, this is a really messy engage by both players. Now, it's important to note that the Tiberian fields have dried up, so they're all gone. Now, does he have... He's got a nuclear missile. That's a real nuclear missile as well. That's really unusual. If you're going to base push, I wouldn't imagine a nuclear missile would come in any hand at all. You're expecting to win with the base push and to push everything in. It's going to take five minutes. He's already had two minutes for that to charge, so that's not bad. Engineers all over the place here for Nash, actually pulling these guys back. He does have a very nice army. Three, four, five juggernauts and a purifier. Masterly just has his redeemer. No flame. He's got four spectre artillery here. Looking to move forward. He needs to try to recover some type of an army here. I think he's going to try to get his man spam back up because it's the cheapest, most cost-effective way. He's actually building cabals. And I mean, I guess that's okay at this stage of the game. Uh, you get the full cabal squad a lot better than a drafted one. Only extra 100 bucks, basically. 
uh, but you've got to really uh, have a look at if it's worth it or not. Uh, Juggernaut is being sent to all sides of the map. He's splitting them up. I'm not sure what the big split up is for. He doesn't have to worry about stealth. I mean, splitting them up, he is vulnerable to somewhat uh, bike harassment, things like that. But of course, there are no bikes coming out, I believe. Oh, we got a flame tank coming out. So Leaf is like, all right, cool. I can't get through the front door, so I'm going to go around the back door. Uh, these flame tanks, if they can get into position. Nash has no fast attack, by the way. He's got no aircraft. He's got no pit bulls. If a flame tank gets into the back, it's going to be a long time before anything can respond to that. And the Marv is now back out, keeping that Reclamator up. I think he's kept just one ref here the whole time since it was destroyed last. Another minute now, cooled down on the nuclear missile. So just four minutes remaining for Nash to make a move in this game. And you know what? He Oh, that's, uh, that's Marv. Oh, he doesn't quite destroy it. That's okay. He's actually firing at his harvesters. Oh, that harvester full of blue Tiberium. Not blue Tiberium, sorry. I'm just used to saying blue Tiberium when a harvest is destroyed, but uh, unfortunately there is a purifier over here and that does belong to Nashington, so he's going to kill all those infantry squads here. Uh, there is a harvester down here actually trying to gun down the infantry and he realizes, hang on a second, that's not a good idea. Flame tank up there. There is a flame tank coming in the back. He sells this off. He's got his own trooper squad. He might be able to kill... Oh, jump jet away as well and the, the, flame the flame turret was in the wrong direction, so he will clean that up. That's well done. The other flame tank, did he get in? No, he's just sitting over here idle. I believe that purifier was destroyed. Yeah, that suicidal purifier fire here. Leaf just calling all his harvesters back because there's no Tiberium anyway. There's actually some Tiberium up here he might want to go grab but we're into the we're into the stage of the game where on a map like this because there aren't I mean because it's so easy to secure the Tiberium fields and so and because there's such few Tiberium fields in the game it gets to this point where all the fields are taken and constantly harvested uh, where in a lot of other maps that doesn't happen. Usually bases will be overrun and destroyed and areas will regrow while that base is uh, trying to be re-established. Oh man, Marsleaf is in a lot of trouble. He's in range now. And I think uh, this is not good. Actually, reverse base push here. He's coming through with his own MCV. But there is a flame tank over here. Fla a heroic, not for heroic flame tank, elite flame tank. Not quite heroic. He's on his way. Sniper teams did get called. I'm not sure what that flame tank's going to be doing. Uh, he is pushing here. The rage gen goes off. I don't think he's going to get any kills on these juggernauts. So that juggernaut going walkabouts. He might want to just sell off the reclamator hub here uh, to get the zone trooper squad that he needs. Uh, there's a grenade squad there, but it doesn't have EMP grenades. He's going to try. If this goes heroic, that's going to be bad news for him. Meanwhile, there's an attack happening on the front. His zone troopers are here as well. There's uh, towers coming down to prevent this. EMP buggies running in now. The EMP buggies are coming in here. They get... No, they miss. Oh, they destroyed. Oh, look at that. Whiffed. Cake. Beautiful cake. All the EMP is whiffed here. It has to complete the animation before it takes effect. But Spectre Artillery comes in. Oh, two... Three dead juggernauts now. Three dead juggernauts. The flame tank was cleaned up. The flame tank is dead. There's three husks right here. Leaf needs to put them down. Here comes the strike. That's going to hurt Nash right there. Oh, three husks down. They can never be reclaimed now. So... That's not good. There is a Marv here. He needs to focus that. Uh, he needs to focus that EMP buggy. Oh, he just gets it. He needs to focus the next one as well. He's focusing now. He's microing it. He's microing his heart out. He gets that as well. That zone trooper squad is definitely helping a ton in killing those EMP buggies because EMP buggies do not like rail weapons. They will absolutely uh, explode just at the the thought of uh, <laughs> thought of rail weapons here. But. Uh, Nonetheless, he is pulling back and Leaf that oh, this was in such a dangerous position to put the Temple of Mod, Nod, by the way, such a dangerous location because it's not exactly far in his base. It's, it's basically in artillery range from here. I mean, Nash might just move forward in a second. He's only got a minute 15. If he's allowed to launch the nuclear missile, that will uh, probably secure the game for Master Leaf. Look at this. Most of Nash's base is gone. Most of it is gone. There's some APCs moving up here. He does have an MCV. He does have a war factory repairing these units here now. Uh, force firing the Spectre artillery. A few EMP buggies coming out to see what's going on. Marv somewhat vulnerable over here. There's one, two, three, four Spectre artillery remaining all spread out. No, five. It's another one over here. I'm not sure what the deal is with both these guys spreading their artillery so thin. MCV does now come back out. Fence comes online. He's got some sniper teams here, which is very nice to have those against the infantry. Of course, not the best counter to Black Hand Infantry, but still good enough. He's actually in range of this Temple of Nod. There's just 35 seconds remaining. A Juggernaut is also moving into position. He's going to have to start focusing that. Leaf might want to put down a Rax, get a Engineer ready for a clutch repair. Scan comes down. He sees this. There's actually not a lot of units here. You can see that the EMP buggies are building up, though. There's a lot of EMP buggies. He's going to go in. Rage Gen goes off, which means he can't actually focus the buggies down. That was brilliant move there by Marsley. But the EMP buggies, where are they going? Where are they going? They need to start throwing them up. They do get them up. They nail them up. The nuclear missile still lives. He gets EMP on these juggernauts. Nash is going to try to go for it. He's got APCs here. He's still firing at the nuclear missile. Four, three, two. He's actually going to be able to fire this nuclear missile off. It's so close. He needs to shoot it now. He fires it off. He fires it off. It's going to come down on this army. Almost no doubt going to come down on this army. I'm not even sure where it's going to come down. There it goes. Oh, man. Nuclear missile in my first one back from my 500s there. And it mainly just killed all the juggernauts. And of course, the Marv took a bit of a pounding from that as well. 
just through the haze there. We can see its repair pads just glowing nicely. All the EMP buggies were expended in that attack, and the Redeemer actually paid for it with the Redeemer. And you know what? Nash, without his structures being targeted, he's still okay. Engineers are on the field looking to reclaim those husks. Those Spectre Artillery, which are still alive for Leaf, aren't actually being used to focus down the husks. And if Nash is able to reclaim these, he's got three Engineers here. That Engineer's going a little bit uh, sideways. He needs to actually go back down. And Master Leaf has thrown in at that point there. So, wow, that was a... That was pretty intense by both players. The base push, to be honest, both of them could have done a better job of the base push. Masterleaf, I think, when he base pushed, and he's going to hate me for trying to lecture him or anything like that, but I'm not lecturing him. But if you look at it, there was a very long period of time, like over a minute, where he just seemed so idle with the base push. He just wasn't really doing anything. He wasn't putting base defenses. He wasn't moving further forward. He wasn't using his Spectre artillery. Nash was actually in a lot of trouble at that point in the game. So by not pushing when he had a, a really big window, Nash was able to recover and a few lucky engagements there, and, and Nash was able to uh, to push through. Not not uh, Dish and Nash or anything like that. He played very, very well. He had the unit com combination that he really needed, and the sniper teams and the zone trooper combos and stuff like that really worked out for him, so uh, well done with that. Uh, nice flame tanks as well from Leaf to get himself back into that as well. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, for Leaf, uh, he did uh, he played well. He played very solid, especially at the end where he did the rage gen and sent the EMP buggies in. That was brilliant because he couldn't target the EMP buggies, but the problem was that the EMP buggies all rushed in and then he's like oh hang on a second I need to spread these out and try to EMP everything which he did actually do but at the end of the day it, it took him a bit too long and he just he ended up losing that engagement unfortunately so uh, that is going to be the end of the game here 19 minute game there 142,000 to leave 133,000 to Nash so about 8,000 in favor of Masterly so not it's not a big enough margin to really change anything here I don't think he really needed a nuclear missile. It really only damaged the Marvin and killed two juggernauts. I think, especially if he was base pushing, I said it in the game, he should have just built, you know, uh, more base defenses, more spectres, move forward. You know, he has great base defenses. He could have pushed into Nash and been a bit more aggressive. And uh, I'm not sure what Nash's idea of moving all those juggernauts around was, but the flanks were pretty crazy when that big engagement happened. But that was a really nice game, by the way. Well done to both players. I really enjoyed that game. That was heaps good. Uh, but anyway, I'm Green Zero. Thank you for all for watching this video. Got more coming up for you. Stay tuned to my channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.